Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys for coming out today. Uh, you know, it's a exciting time of year. Anytime you get towards that end of October, uh, you start to really kind of start feeling the, uh, you know, anxiousness and the excitement of the season. Uh, and so we've been heavy into practice mode now, um, you know, since the end of September. And it's really nice to have a lot of returning faces out on the court. Uh, we, we have a lot of our starters um, that are returning uh, and um, some bench players that have really stepped up their game, um, especially from, from the wing position. We feel really confident um, about some of our younger wings and, and where, they, where they're stepping up to. Um, but we also have a lot to work on. And so um, I'm, we're challenging them uh, every day as coaches. We're really trying to pick up the intensity within practice. Um, our goal is to be playing championship level basketball from the start of the season, not just waiting until March. Uh, that's especially important because we have probably the hardest non-conference schedule that we've ever um, played. Uh, the games got limited due to how many Horizon League games we had, but so we we're only able to schedule seven. But out of those seven, we're playing four Power Five schools, um, and a lot of them have been in the NCAA tournament. So, um, if you want to reach a certain dream, you got to play those teams to you know so you know what that looks like and emulate that. But um, I have two outstanding players here with me, two that players that I feel like could be all league players. Uh, and so I'm excited for you guys to ask them some questions as well. Kyle, um, obviously the pandemic was not a great thing for anybody, but from your standpoint, being able to bring back the seniors that you, that you were, that you wouldn't have in other circumstances, how big is that for the overall picture of your team this year? It's huge. I mean, we're returning, um, you know, three guards uh, that played a lot of minutes for us. You know, and even Michaela Santoro, she didn't start for us last year um, because we also had Bree Sierra um, in Jersey, but she easily could have been a starter. I mean, we felt like we got a lift uh, when she stepped on the court. So to be able to have three returning guards um, at the helm, I think is, is really huge for us because it calms us down quite a bit. Um, they've played a lot of minutes under our system. Uh, they know what is expected of them. And so it's really nice to, to have the returners um, and the energy that they can bring. Um, they're also really good at holding everybody accountable because uh, they know our culture. And so, you know, constantly like challenging the freshman class um, and even our really large, we call them redshirt freshmen, but our sophomore class. And um, we have a really big class in that sense and they're really help, able to guide them. It's like having three extra coaches on the court. I mean, really, I feel like my coaching staff is a group of seven <laughs> instead of just four. So with that being said, are the rules pretty much established at this time based on what happened last year or is there still some question marks in that department? I feel like our core group is um, somewhat established. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we kind of know who we're going into rotations in terms of starting lineups. Um, I do feel like there could be some play um, in some of, like, you know, those, you know, seven through ten spots or really kind of eight through ten spots I think are being kind of, like, fought fought for right now. And so we're getting some high competition in practice. I think that some of our bench players are also challenging our starters. But when you look at it in terms of minutes played uh, and experience, it, they be, our starters become extremely valuable with how much they've played on the court. I mean, we have a very, you look at the minutes played of our starting group, and it's, a, it's one of the top in the league. How about energy wise? You lose a player like Brady, Ben King, who obviously the stats were phenomenal, but still I think they don't show up in the box score. How do you go about filling that void? Absolutely. Um, it is a tough void to fill, I'm going to be honest. You know, we, we miss Brandy and Bree for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, they were a part of something really special last year, us winning a championship uh, and, you know, being co-regular co season champs. I mean, they were a large part of that. Uh, but as I always say, at, no matter if they would have come back, it still would have been a new team. It still would have been um, finding that chemistry uh, and trying to figure out how to play with that group because every season is a different season. Uh, so for as much as we miss them and miss their personalities, we've had people that have really stepped up um, in different categories. I think Emma Whitmerhouse has really taken her game to another level. I think Macy McGlone um, is also playing very high-level basketball. So that's two six-three posts um, moving into the rotation. Um, and then, you know, with Michaela Santoro, like I said, she's she's kind of like a starter last year anyway. But Kendall Need and Angie Sierra have been playing out of their mind. I mean, they actually have been some of our better guards because we've been – injured, not injured season ending, but injured to where people haven't been able to get full court reps and they've been able to get a lot of those reps uh, and they're, they're really showing out. So we feel really confident in how other players have kind of stepped up with the absence of those two. Megan, I know the end of last year, um, you were kind of struggling a little bit with the injury. How 
are you feeling right now? And um, uh, what did you go through to get back to being able to play? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it was tough a little bit at the end of the season, but I've done what I've needed to in this off season to get healthy. And I'm at a point now where I'm feeling a lot stronger and more confident in myself. So it's been a good recovery, a great summer, and I'm feeling ready to go for the season. Now, it was, a, was it a foot injury? Is that correct? Yes, I did have a foot injury, and it, it got worse towards the end of, end of, end of the season. Um, but I'm fully recovered now. So. Left or right foot? Uh, my right foot. Right foot. Mm -hmm. okay, Just to interject with that, I think the biggest improvement we've seen from Megan from last year to this year has just been her leadership qualities. Actually, both of these two have really stepped up in the leadership category. And now Megan's at a position where I think she understands like how much we value her. And so her even her level of demanding the ball has changed from last year to this year. I think that she wants us to be even more successful. And so she's um, really using her voice um, to help take our team to that next level. Just to piggyback off that, Megan, when you look at how teams approach you last year, I think it's fair to say, especially early on, maybe some teams have forgotten about you because you were out for a year with an injury, and all of a sudden you became a focal point with some of the numbers you had. How did you adjust your game to how teams approach you? How did you see teams approach you? And maybe how have you seen your game evolve from that experience? I mean, yeah, as I went through the season, obviously – more teams are going to start to double in the post or just put more of a focus on me um, with their defense. Um, so just knowing where to look for my teammates to make the passes, and I know that they're going to hit the shots from the outside. So they're just kind of listening, and when I see the double, kick it out fast. Um, that's something that I think I got better on, um, and just like being patient in the post and knowing that sometimes I will get doubled and won't get as many one-on-one -on -one opportunities. But my teammates are always going to be making cuts and ready for the open shots. So I trust in them, and they trust in me to make those passes. So you were one of the players that had a decision to make about whether to come back. Was it, was it a pretty much a no-brainer for you? And, and how, how cool does it feel to be back with this group again? Yeah, definitely. It was, it was a no-brainer. I had the opportunity to play another year of basketball. Um, that doesn't last forever. And then I had the opportunity to go get my master's degree. Um, and I, yeah, there was no way I was going to say no to that. And I loved my friends on the team, and I wasn't going to walk away from it. What, what are you uh, studying? What are you going for right now? Occupational therapy. Oh. So I have two and a half years. Yep. I, I can start with you, too. I was interested. I, I had been bugging Cody about this all through the offseason, the free throw record. Now it's official <laughs> in the books, like the best amazing, ever. Right? What, what, does that, what does that mean <laughs> to you all to be able to say, we were the best like ever in basketball in this <laughs> third category? Yeah, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around, I think. Um, a lot of us are still kind of wrapping our mind around that. But I know when I was a freshman, we came in, we had some really great leaders that put in 100 free throws every single week. It's still a thing. It's been since for five years now. Um, so it's really cool to see something that was implemented from previous leaders. Um, you know, they get just as much credit as we do. They're the reason that we got to this point because for five years, we've been doing 100 free throws every single week. So. You know, Cindy, like Megan, you Where are you at right now, and then I guess what areas of your game have you focused on? Because we could, we saw you know a wide range of your ability last year with that three point shot, but your ability to drive to the hoop as well. Yeah, I think this year I'll have to step into a bigger leading role um, and scoring role with Brandy being gone. Obviously, we still have Megan, and that's great because she'll draw a lot of defenders, which will give me an open shot. Um, but yeah, I, I take it day by day, getting healthier. I feel in a good spot. Um, yeah. Coach, is there a mantra for this season? You know, like, like you know, last year, when the season ended, you and I talked about unfinished business after the way the WNIT run came to a close. And last year, you guys were ranked near the bottom of the preseason poll, and, and I know you guys took that to heart and used it as motivation. What kind of the focus, or what's maybe the, the message for this team going into this season? Yeah, we actually have a few that we're keeping to ourselves, some team stuff that we talk about um, on a daily basis. But, you know, some of the common stuff we talk a lot about is this opportunity to get 1% better every day. Uh, I, I really believe that we're really a strong team already, um, and we want to continue to push that mark forward. 
uh, because we didn't accomplish all of our goals last year. You know, our goal was to make it to the NCAA tournament, uh, and, you know, we ran into IUPUI in the Horizon League and, and lost that one in the tournament. So um, so we still have work to do, and we're very hungry. And so I feel like I especially have been able to challenge them a little bit more. Um, my standard has – the bar has been raised a little bit, um, and I'm holding them to a much higher standard than I was even last year. Uh, you know, last year we were picked seventh. And, um, and, you know, we had that chip on our shoulder every game we went into. We would talk about, you know, this, you know, we're not being respected in the league. Um, that came out a lot. You know, we had to prove something. I'm guessing it hasn't come out yet, but I'm guessing we won't be picked seventh again this year. <laughs> if we are, then I'll be really shocked. But um, I'm guessing that won't be the case. I think we'll be up, you know, in that top group, you know, probably top three somewhere in there. Um, and so now we have to have a different mentality. We have to walk into the gym knowing that we're better than the teams that we're playing. Um, and it's a different type of chip. Um, it's, you know, we're going to have that respect. And now we have to go in knowing that we're the better team and, and that we need to start off the game, you know, 10, 15 points ahead. Yeah, I mean, we definitely ended um, on a pretty good note last year, so people are going to know that we're coming out strong this year as well. And I just think the biggest thing is having confidence in ourselves and each other um, now that we are going to be probably ranked higher, like just knowing that we are a great team and stepping out with that confidence every time we step on the court. Yeah, I think last year was great, um, but we have to put that behind us, and this is a completely different year, and we have higher expectations than we even did last year. Um, and I think just going into every single game, every team is just as important as the next, doesn't matter who we're playing, um, and just holding ourselves to that standard.